looked at the list of liked videos and recommended channels on my YouTube channel for a while, you might not have known that I was really into retro games, and that in particular I enjoyed channels like The 8-Bit Guy, Retro Man Cave, Lazy Game Reviews, and My Life in Gaming. In particular, I've been I enjoy their coverage of older computing and restoring old hardware, and along with their coverage of how to get the best possible picture and audio out of that hardware, though I have neither the money nor the space to go quite as far down the rabbit hole as they do. That, combined with the wave of video game soundtrack releases, that's led to me getting warmed up to vinyl record collecting. So, when I learned that Andrew Cartmel, former showrunner of Doctor Who towards the end of Sylvester McCoy's run, had written a series of mystery novels related to record collecting, I was interested. These books follow the titular Final Detective, a man who, like Dashiell Hammett's Continental Op, doesn't give his real name to the reader, nor does he have a pseudonym attached to him, like his other l literary mystery forebear, Jonathan Gash's Lovejoy. To date, three novels have been written with the character, Written in Dead Wax, The Runout Groove, and Victory Disc all of which I've read, and we'll be talking about today. Each of the novels features the detective being hired to find a particular record, or series of records, each of which on their own are worth enough to be worth killing over, but as each book goes on, the detective ends up learning that they're tied to an older murder as well, raising some of the stakes of the case. These investigations also involve the detective exploring the relevant music scene that is attached to that record. And all three books have involved different types of records and the difficulties involved with collecting them. The first book gets into the jazz scene from the 1930s to the 1950s while also getting into the basics of vinyl collecting. The second book, The Runout Groove, gets into the psychedelic rock scene of the 60s and 70s along with collecting singles. And the most recent book gets into wartime big band jazz while also getting into the difficulties of collecting 48 RPM shellac records. These books have a great supporting cast as well, and yes, my choices of photos here are me engaging in fan casting. So in addition to the detective himself, there's also the detective's girlfriend, Nevada, who is a neophyte to record collecting, making her a audience surrogate in that regard, while still providing her own wide array of skills in business, and also breaking and entering. There's also Tinkler, and yes, that is his real name, a fellow record collector who is all about 70s rock and roll, and who also has a very impressive appetite, and who also smokes a fair amount of weed. I get the vibe the choice of name is perhaps a reference to Tinker Dill from Lovejoy. And then there's Cleanhead, not her real name. She's called that as a reference to jazz musician Eddie Cleanhead Vinson, who is a London cabbie and excellent driver, who also has a, is a big history buff and is a sucker for penguin paperbacks, and who is also in a state of off-and-on romantic tension with uh, Tinkler. And finally, there is Stinky Stanmer, a BBC DJ who does a jazz show and who steals all of his best material, both in terms of music and jokes, from the detective. Stinky knows the detective from their time together in college and consequently keeps kind of shoving his way into the detective's life whenever he thinks there's a something going on that can lead to more material for his show. Like a lot of good mis modern mystery series, we have real character growth for these characters. Detective in particular, over these three books. Detective doesn't start as cynical and as jaded as the Continental Op does. Nor does he ever go that far. What he does get is savvy. He comes to spot the signs of things over getting serious. Of course, the story so we can try and take steps to make sure it doesn't get too far over his head. So it Anyway, this is particularly notable in the first and third books. In the first book, written in dead wax, the detective is very much over his head as he's never done anything like this before. He's just a collector who's good at finding records. It's like hiring Pat the NES punk to find a rare NES game. He'd be really good at finding it, and though not to be presumptuous, I just, I'd still say it'd be perfectly reasonable and not in any way insulting to say that when people start getting murdered over that game, he would be legitimately freaked out and probably go, maybe not so much for me hunting down this game. I'm, I'll back off. Now, if I'm wrong, Pat may feel free to correct me. And I... 
Um, and yeah, you correct me on this if I'm wrong, Pat. By victory disc, the detective is more comfortable with his job, and he clearly feels like he's more prepared for the kind of stuff that came up in the first book, which actually leads to him getting into more trouble when things get hotter than he expects them to get. This makes sense, because once you get more comfortable with risk and peril, you start feeling like you can handle it more, then thus end up developing a, a different kind of blind spot. Think, oh, I can handle this. Can't. I also appreciate the fact that the detective is a collector, as it gives a good explanation for the common private detective conceit of why the detective is strapped for cash at the start of the story, leading to them taking on a job that maybe they wouldn't otherwise take. In most detective novels, if they're good enough to be approached for the work that they're being approached for, they also should theoretically be getting enough business to keep the rent paid, whereas the normal conceit is they're broke, they have bills that are due, they need to pay their rent, they take a big paying job without looking too hard at it because hey we gotta pay our, I gotta pay my bills and the person comes to this person this detective because they have developed a reputation for being able to handle this kind of ending in something of a of a uh, catch twenty two. Now with a collector money goes into their pocket from a job and then out of their pocket for the thing that they collect. And you get your paycheck, you turn around, you go to the thrift shops and hunt down some records. Maybe you flip some of them for some additional extra cash, but otherwise those go on your shelves and you listen to them because you're a collector. Not that I'm speaking on prior experience. That's looking over his shoulder at the giant rack, giant shelf of video games anime, and so forth and so on. All in all, I really like these books. I don't know where Cartmel might go with book number four, and I'm not sure what kinds of records are left to cover. However, if the vinyl detective does return, I'll certainly be picking up his next adventure. As always, referral links to where you can pick up the books while supporting the show can be found in the show notes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything. Like that.